dear friends welcome to this electrical engineering knowledge sharing channel amp power system we are discussing generator control under workshop 6 and in this workshop we have already completed two session where we have discussed about the synchronization and active power that is kilowatt and or frequency or speed control so all of the item is remain pending that is your voltage control or bar control otherwise voltage control or reactive power control so today's session 3 we will try to cover this voltage control or bar control of a generator either it is a single generator or multiple generators running in parallel so that will be our topics today that is a voltage or kvr control of a generators so before going into discussion for control of this parameter we have to discuss first how this parameter is getting generated by a generator if we know the process by who is the voltage or bar is or reactive power is getting produced then only we can find the way to control it so when we looking into generator any generators that is alternators it has it is producing power we say it is apparent power that is a kva or volt ampere this power has a two part we can say the power of a generator that power we say it has a two part that is called apparent power it has a two part one part we call active power another part we call reactive power that is a active active power another we call reactive power reactive we measure this is in bar and this is we measure in kilowatt or watt that is active part this is the two part of a power we have already discussed during our power factor improvement that the power which is working it has it can be this is apparent power it can be dissolved into two rectangular component quadrilateral component this horizontal component we call is kilowatt and this part we call kvr and this part we call kva so this is the apparent power the apparent power consist of two part active part and reactive part this part we call reactive part and this part is called kilowatt now the active part we are very much familiar because every day we are see the active part that is your your lighting system is working producing light that is active part suppose motor is rotating that is active part our washing machine is running that is your active part the compressor in the fridge it is running it is active part then uh, suppose there is a heater is running that is all our active part so in our daily life in the domestic front uh, if we see the various type of electrical load or electrical current run by various load this mainly all our active current we are or active part active load we are looking so when we talk about the reactive power then slightly we are confused what is that power how does it look so the problem is reactive power is not visible also this active power is not visible but the consequences of active power we can visualize but the active part of reactive power that is not visualized we cannot visualize it that was a magnetic core or a magnet inductor run wound of a magnetic core when you current flowing through the inductor then the inductor getting core is getting magnetized so for magnetization of the core the current or power drawn by the inductor that is a fully magnetized that is called reactive power so this is one of the example that is you can see you put some iron dust particle along a uh, solenoid and solenoid is a wound on a uh, core then if you pass the current alternating current through the solenoid immediately you will see the magnetic particles surrounding the core and coil that is attracting by the coil so this is a magnetic this that means the core is converted to magnet due by the flowing of magnetizing current in the inductor that is called actually reactive power or kvr so th this is a pure reactive so but most of us motor winding when the motor is rotating and it is running a pump or a compressor or any other rotating you can suppose the motor is rotating a fan you can say fan is rotating but also that fan it is rotating that is the mechanical part that is the active power by rotating but it is also because the motor is winding is getting uh, 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 magnetized by current so it is also drawing the magnetic reactive current but that part we cannot visualize only rotating but we can visualize so when any power is flowing through a line it has actually two part one part is called ac power is flowing one part is called active power another is the reactive power 
and this active power reactive power who was producing who is the generator generator is because it is coming from the source so source is producing this two power active power and reactive power now the active power we have already discussed who is giving the active power when the generator is rotating or generator is producing power it has a two source so if we see the source one source we call is a suppose this is a generator and this generator is coupled with a turbine right this is a coupled so this is a coupler and it is coupling with a turbine you can say in this way this is my turbine if this is the turbine this is a turbine so turbine is giving the mechanical power through the coupler in coming to the generator generator is rotating then the generator is producing output power electrical power right p electrical is producing we have already discussed now if in addition to this turbine rotation in the generator there is a, you know generator has a two winding one winding we call is armature and starter winding another is a rotor winding this this is a rotor part you can say you can say this is my rotor the rotor is coupled with a turbine this is a rotor generator this is the rotor and outside there is a winding that winding we call a, a starter winding right this is a, a starter winding and this is a rotor this rotor has a winding inside rotor there is a winding this winding is getting power this is a rotor winding and this is a starter winding this is a starter this is a rotor okay now when this rotor is rotating the mechanical power given by the turbine but at the same time if we want to get the electric power only by rotating the by turbine it will not produce electric power you only you will say rotor is rotating but it is not producing any power to produce the power this rotor is need to be magnetized if the rotor is is magnetized and this magnetized rotor the rotor is a cylinder suppose this is a cylinder coupled with a turbine shaft and inside the rotor there is a winding if this winding get dc current from some source then it will be magnetized I mean, this is a magnet this magnet is rotating with 3000 rpm between among this coil so when this magnet is moving with a 3000 rpm or 50 hertz then there will be induced emf in the coil and due to this induced emf it is producing the electric power this power is producing by this armature winding or starter winding that means when you want to produce electric power only by rotation you cannot get it you need some magnet to be rotated that means the rotor is con to be converted to magnet either it could be a permanent magnet or it could be electromagnet by passing the dc current if we do this way then only it will produce power that means when a electrical generator producing power it has a producing two type of power one is active power and another is reactive power now the rotational part is called the active power so when a machine is rotating that is getting a, that is getting the when the rotor is rotating who is rotating the rotor the turbine so turbine is giving the mechanical power to rotate the rotor so that is we call the active power so turbine is responsible for the active power turbine is responsible for kilowatt and this rotor is producing this magnetic field and that is giving your reactive part the bar is producing by the rotor so this the dc current which is flowing through the rotor we call is excitation when the rotor is excited by dc current then rotor is converted to magnet and that magnet is responsible for producing this reactive power so when we look into the generator we can see there are two part of the generator one part is responsible for the active power another part is responsible for the reactive power active power who is responsible for the active power that is a turbine rotation so we already discussed rotation is indirectly producing frequency because we know rotation we have already said 120 f by p that equal to rpm so when it is rotating with a n rpm then it is producing frequency 50 hertz that means this rotation is actually responsible for the frequency generation that means the frequency that means we can say another way the active power when the turbine is rotating it is producing active power and that active power is responsible for producing of frequency in other way we can say so if we want to control the frequency what we have to do we have to control the active part active part or if we control the frequency then active part will be changed the if we change, if we reduce the frequency immediately active part active power or rotational speed will drop then the amount of power produced by the machine will be changed active power so the active power and frequency they are correlated they are complement to each other they are replica similarly the reactive power is producing by whom this 
exciter when this is a rotor rotor current magnet is getting magnetized when this rotor coil is getting magnetized then it is producing magnetic flux and that magnetic flux when it is rotating the magnetic flux link with the starter winding and the starter winding is producing voltage so this rotor or excitation system is responsible for the voltage so if we see this excitation system is giving you the output voltage and this output voltage is responsible for the reactive power that means when you want to get the reactive power you have to produce a voltage means you have to give the excitation to the rotor if you give more and more excitation then the magnetic field will be more and more strong and if it may be rotating in the same speed but as you rotate as it will be more and more magnetized so more and more flux change will be there so the voltage will be more and more and as the voltage will be more and more you we know the reactive power formula what is the reactive power formula pr equal to root 3 into voltage into current into sin phi so if the voltage is more then automatically reactive power also more so this way we can we can produce the reactive power that means if we want to produce the reactive power we have to produce a voltage if we want to voltage then what we have to do we have to give a excitation to the rot rotor winding of the generator that's simple so this we can say this is a one part of control when we take control the frequency automatically we can control the active part and when we can control the voltage then immediately we can control the reactive power so this part we have already discussed by governor we do this part and this part we will be discussing today this part we do by the abr automatic voltage regulator so using automatic voltage regulator we can control the generator output voltage and at the same time if we control the generator output voltage automatically reactive power will be also be controlled by the same way so this is the basic of the reactive power control now we said that rotor winding is getting excitation but the rotor winding we do not give excitation directly if you see the actual generator the generator has actually actual generator has a two generator in cascaded not only one generator one generator we call the main generator which is producing the main power and then main generator has a exciter exciter means rotor field that way it has a rotor winding that rotor winding is getting the dc current or dc excitation from another another generator that is a small generator that is also alternating generator that is also has a starter winding as a rotor winding but we call it the armature winding and this field winding so that is also another small generator that a small generator that means in case of main machine there are two generator one is a big generator that is a main generator we call is main generator and then there is another small generator we call is exciter which is producing the exciting current and giving to the rotor in the main generator there is a rotor winding over here the rotor is coupled with the turbine shaft and in outside there is a starter winding here okay and there is a in this there is a rotor winding you can say this is a rotor winding and outside this is a starter winding and a starter winding is going to the bus bar for producing power this is a bus and is giving the power power is going to the bus so, but this rotor this is called rotor winding now this rotor winding this is a part of the this is one phase this is another phase you can see in this way and this is your rotor winding this rotor winding how it is a dc single winding how this dc winding is there rotor winding is getting power it is getting power from the exciter so this exciter how it is working exciter also also has a two winding one is called armature winding another is called field winding but here rotor winding or field winding is rotating but in the xr it is reverse exciter exciter what is happening the field winding is fixed field winding is not rotating that means here the is armature or starter is rotating here and the field winding this is your suppose field winding the field winding is fixed but the this is coupled with the rotor shaft main rotor the main machine rotor or the it is a turbine this is a turbine shaft turbine shaft is coupled with the main generator rotor and main generator rotor is coupled with the exciter starter or armature so this is actually rotating the exciter is rotating here and the field is not rotating field is fixed this field is getting excitation from the dc source so this could be this field could be permanent magnet this could be a electromagnet or it could be permanent magnet so when it is magnetized and this exciter is rotating with the with the turbine then it is producing three phase ac this extra, this armature winding or this starter winding is a three phase winding it has a three phase winding like this connected with the delta or star so it is producing three phase voltage so this three phase voltage is coming to a rectifier there is a 
rectifier is called free wheeling. This is a rotating diode. This three phase voltage coming to a rectifier bank. The rectifier is rotating along with the rotor with the same speed, and that is connected to the rotor directly here. So you can along the shaft. First is the exciter, then at the end of the exciter, you can see where the diode block is mounted on the shaft. From the diode block, final, you know how the rectifier, the bridge, this is a bridge, six diodes, three phase, six diodes are here. These are connected in this way, and this is your uh, three phase voltage we are giving over here from the generator. This generator is producing three phase voltage over here. This is shorted, this is going to the load. So this way and it is producing the DC current. That means the exciter is producing AC current. After the rectification, after the, it is a rectifier. After the rectification, it is producing DC current. The DC current is coming to the rotor field. That is the main generator rotor field. So these exciters. So when you want to control the generator voltage, we have to control this exciter voltage. How we control the exciter? This part we cannot control. Only the field current. That means the exciter field current we can control by this DC supply. So ABR job is to change this DC supply to the field winding to control the generator voltage. So this way generator is operating. So now if we look into this way, then we can now describe in more details how this generator voltage can be controlled. So generator voltage, if we need to control, we have to control the exciter field winding supply. Field winding supply which is coming to the exciter field. So exciter field winding supply is a DC supply and that supply to be controlled okay so how we will control this part that is the discussion today now if we want to control this voltage the same like a speed or a frequency what do you we want to control the voltage that means we need to know what is the voltage produced by the machine the generator what does now this is a generator this is a generator and this is generator is running and it is producing three phase voltage right it is going to the bus bar this is a bus bar this is a three phase bus bar, it is producing this voltage. Okay. Now, this is the condition. Now, we want to control this, this generator voltage. This is a generator, it is producing. This generator has a, this is a field winding, and this is, and then there is another exciter. That exciter has a, a starter winding and it has a field winding. So, ultimately, we have to control this field winding voltage. That is the requirement. Now, if we want to control this generator voltage, first we have to monitor what is the voltage it is producing. So how we will monitor the voltage? We will tap it, we will sense the output voltage of the generator. From here, we have to sense, we have to take this voltage as a actual voltage. What is the actual voltage? But if it is a high voltage generator, we cannot tap directly. We have to use a PT. We have to use a PT and the PT output voltage will be coming to the equipment, to who is controller. So this will give the voltage actual, right? When the generator is rotating, what is the voltage it is producing? We will sense the voltage by potential transformer we get the voltage input and we know suppose this is a 3.3 kb generator we know that suppose this is a 3.3 kb by suppose 400 volt pt so input is a 400 volt that means 400 volt replica 3.3 kb now we know this generator voltage we want to maintain 3.3 kb that equivalent to 400 volt that means there is a reference voltage already in the equipment or already informed to the equipment that i need always 400 volt input that means 400 volt equivalent to 3.3 kb so this is my reference voltage vr this reference voltage is already given there once we give the reference voltage then this equipment has a brain so he knows if this 400 volt come as an input then this voltage produced by 3.3 kb the moment suppose the voltage come down to 380 volt then immediately the equipment will understand i am supposed to get 400 volt now i am getting 380 volt that means the voltage is not 3.3 kb voltage is proportional to how much it will be it will be 3.8 into 3.3 by 4 so this will be the ratio so it will be maybe it is 3 kb so he knows i have that means immediately this equipment will understand there is a voltage drop so this equipment has a part like a speed controller it has a input device input section where the reference voltage is there and the actual voltage is there and it has a capability to compare or calculate to difference when it will compare this thing, it will see there is a difference of voltage. That voltage we call it error voltage or error signal. That means this device will calculate this thing and same like a speed controller and the difference immediately it will understand there is a difference. Then what it will do immediately that difference you want to with basis based on that difference it will try to 
rectify this. How will the, when the difference is coming? Immediately, what it has to do? It has to give an output signal to whom? To this exciter to increase the excitation. Okay, the moment it will see there is a difference, actual voltage is lower than the reference voltage, then immediately this uh, device will understand that there is a drop of voltage. So we have to increase the excitation, means exciter rotor field excitation. So it will give some more DC current. Suppose there is a 5 ampere current is flowing. Now he knows I have to increase the current 6 ampere. So accordingly, it will increase the current. How we'll do that? We'll discuss this part. So that means in the case of control this voltage we have the same like a speed controller we have a input device that input device what it is taking input device is taking for controlling the voltage it is taking the pt supply or this terminal voltage from the generator this is a generator terminal voltage is taking i am drawing on single line it is taking the pt supply to the input device this is the input device pt supply is coming over here that is v actual and there is a reference voltage already are there vr so with that it will compare, then it will create an error signal. You can say it will create, other way we can do as an amplifier, this is a positive signal, this is the actual signal negative, and this reference signal is given over here positive. So this, this is a VA actual and it is a VR. So it will compare, the compare of the difference, it will compare VR difference VA, and it will create, and immediately it has a comparator on the, on the processor, processor, this processor will process, and there will be error signal, some delta V is the error signal. The moment it will create a delta V, then what it will do, because it has to produce a DC current, high magnitude, so how it will produce, then after that there is a power section. So after this there is a power section, in this power section there is a thyristors, okay, there is a thyristors, you know, thyristor is used for the, con okay, now the thyristor, we know the thyristor is a device which can convert which is a which is act as a diode but with the facility of controlling the angle of conduction suppose there is a ac supply is coming like this okay through a thyristor this is a thyristor this signal is single base signal is coming over here and thyristor has a gate the moment gate trigger come immediately thyristor will conduct and the current will flow the moment gate trigger taken out immediately thyristor will get a stop so now if this thyristor has connected to a ac source a strong AC source, then AC current will be going the, through the thyristor. So this is that AC current and this gate signal, suppose, we, but thyristor will not conduct the entire current. It will start conducting when the gate signal will come. If we apply the gate signal at this point, then what will happen? Thyristor will start conducting at this point. So this amount of power will flow through the thyristor, then it will stop. Then again, second trigger, it comes, suppose there is a reverse, another diode is there. At that point we trigger, then it will, this amount of current will flow. So by, uh, by controlling the angle, this angle, we can control the output power of the thyristors. So this thyristor is located inside the power block. And this thyristor is getting power from where? Here we are putting another voltage transformer. This voltage transformer is giving power to this thyristor block. Okay. And this error signal which is producing over here, this error signal we are connecting to the gate to this thyristor gate so when we give this error signal to the thyristor gate the error signal will decide at what angle the thyristor to be conducted that means this control signal which is produced by the comparator that control signal is used to triggering the thyristor to decide the phase conduction or conduction angle which will control the output so this output will be a dc output finally so, but there will be harmonics. So, what will happen after the power section, there will be a rectifier, which will rectify this harmonics and final DC current will come from here. The amount of DC current will be decided by the error signal triggering point and that DC current is coming to the exciter field. The exciter which we have drawn before, that will come to the exciter field and exciter field will be excited or magnetized based on the strength of the current. So, this way, this device control device is controlling the voltage okay so in a block form if we show then what is the input section of this this control loop if we put in a block form then we can see how it is controlling suppose this is our i am drawing from this side this is our generator and this is a field winding and this is our exciter and exciter field winding so ultimately we have to give the supply at this point to controlling the 
output voltage of the generator. So what is happening? Now from the generator there is a PT. I am showing only one phase. This PT supply is coming as a actual voltage. Okay. So this is our, suppose this is our comparator. So this is our negative and there is a positive signal here as a V reference. So it is producing the delta V reference voltage. Then this reference voltage is coming to a power block. This is a power block where the signal is getting, conduction is getting changed by the thyristor angle. This is coming to the thyristor gate angle. If we draw a thyristor over here, this gate is getting power from this delta V and this thyristor is getting power supply from the same bus. There is a another PT which is giving the thyristor power. It is coming from here, thyristor power. Okay. So this gate is triggered. So this is producing this corresponding conduction as per conduction it is producing power. This is called power re re rectifier section. Then we have a filter section. Filter. This is a filter. This is total power sector. Then this filter sector, what is doing? After it is getting filter, then it is coming output. It is a output section. And this output section is going where? It is going to the exciter field here. This output is going to the exciter field. So this control device has a one input section where these two signal is receiving. Then it has a processor or power section with a filter and output is coming DC and then it is coming to output section. These are the three major sections. In addition to this, this control device, another two sections are there. What are those two sections? As same like e-speed controller, it has a one setting section. It has one setting section. So if I draw in a big form, this is your input section. Then this is your power and control section, power and control section. Then this is your output section. Your input VA reference is VR. It is calculating delta V, getting rectified. It is coming over here. From here, it is coming to DC supply to the rotor winding. It is coming to the rotor winding of the exciter rotor. Exciter rotor, no, exciter field winding, we can say. Exciter field winding. Then we have a setting module. Setting module. Then what is there? Then same like, then there will be a, to operate this thing, you need power supply. So there will be a power supply module. It will need some auxiliary power supply. Then it has an interface section which can be connected with other governor or load sharing, whatever is required, interface section. So a typical control device have a, this type of section, this type of five to six section will be there. Now, when this device is operating, so this is how the signal is getting, input is getting and how the equipment is, voltage is controlled, that is a, uh, we can make out from here. Now we have to see this device, it has an operation, mode of operation, same like the speed controller. This device can be operated in a two different mode. One mode we call isochronous voltage control mode. Another is a droop voltage control mode. As we said in the case of speed, isochronous modes, mode means it will run with a constant frequency. It will, you cannot change the frequency. Frequency will be maintained. And there is another mode we call it a droop mode where frequency will be changed as per the load, as per the active power. Here the same way, the voltage control module, voltage controller also work in the same way it has a two mode, one is called isochronous mode. In the case of isochronous mode, this voltage controller will be working in such a way, you cannot change the voltage of the generator. Generator voltage will be maintained constant. Whatever the reactive power you withdraw from the generator, generator voltage will be maintained constant. That is called isochronous voltage control mode. This voltage control device work in two mode. One mode we call isochronous voltage mode isochronous voltage mode. In the isochronous voltage mode, says same like isochronous speed controller, voltage of the output terminal of the generator will maintain constant despite of changing the reactive power of the generator. Uh, either you increase the reactive power drawing or you reduce the reactive power drawing, generator terminal voltage will be maintained constant. In that case, we call it isochronous voltage mode. Another we call is droop voltage mode. In that case, what is happening? As you draw more and more reactive power from the machine, machine will be, voltage will be getting dropped more and more. So when it is do, going to drop about full, suppose the machine is loading at a 100% capacity of its KBR capacity, 
or the load KBR, whatever the rated capacity of the KBR, if you draw the load the machine hundred percent, then it will come to the rated voltage. But when there is no KBR, then it will go to is no no load voltage. That is a maximum voltage. So this way, if we work in this, that means drop mode is a mode where the voltage will be depend on on the how much KBR load you are putting on the machine. If you increase the KBR load, voltage will be getting drop and drop. At hundred percent load, it will be running on the rated voltage. So that is we call that drop mode. These are the two modes. In the case of isochronous mode, when we can use the isochronous mode normally, isochronous mode we use for the single machine. In the single machine system, we use the isochronous mode. Suppose a single generator is running, and we want to run the isochronous mode. So what do we do? We send the this controller. What do we do? This is a running, it giving power to the bus. So we put a PT, or if it is a low voltage, we directly tap the voltage, and we give to the controller. And the controller, this is our controller. This is a negative supply and positive already be there, which is there as we discuss before. So immediately, what will happen? It will compare the delta V. Delta V will be come to the controller and the power circuit. It will give the output. The output come DC. That DC will come to the generator exciter rotor field. It will come directly from here to the rotor field. As the voltage is more and more, it will give more and more excitation. So the voltage will be going up and up. So it will it will happen instantly. So you will not see there is a change of voltage over here. If there is a minor change, it will automatically come back. You need not to, you don't need any manual intervention. So if the machine is running in this way, you call it isochronous voltage mode. But in this mode, if you put a multi-wheel machine, then the problem is who will control the voltage? The moment you increase the load over here, now if you put multi-wheel machine, it will happen the same thing. Then there will be competition when there is a active reactive load over the bus bar, KBR load on the bus. Then this uh, suppose three machines are running. Then all the three bus voltage will drop immediately. All the three machine will try to in all the three machine controller will try to increase the voltage. And then there will be competition amongst them who will take the load and how much it will take. So there is a chance of instability amongst the machines. The voltage will not be stable. Voltage will be fluctuating. It will be dancing. Because the machine are not able to cope up, or it cannot decide who will give, who will take what amount of KBR. So in the in that region, when the multi-wheel machine is there, it is not preferable to run the machine on isochronous voltage mode. We have to go for the other mode. So isochronous voltage mode we operate only when the machine is single machine is running. We can use a isochronous voltage mode. Otherwise, if the machines are identical with all controller is identical, in that case we can use the Isochronous mode. Otherwise, another option we can use isochronous mode with a two machine system or multi machine system. If one of the machine is very big, very big in comparison to the other machines, in that case, what has happened? What will happen? This big machine will run on isochronous modes, which will maintain the bus voltage, and other generators will be working as a other mode, not in the isochronous mode, in the drop mode. So, whenever the extra loads come on the system, all the loads will came will be taken by the Main generator additional load, and other machine will take load only with the manual intervention. So that way also we can run isochronous mode. Other but it is always preferable with the multi-wheel machine of similar size or minor difference in size. Machine should be not not to be run in isochronous mode. The second mode of operation in that case what will happen? In that case if you would draw this isochronous mode uh, frequency load the frequency KBR diagram. The diagram will be a straight line. If you draw this isochronous machine characteristics, uh, isochronous characteristics. Suppose this way, this is your. Suppose this is your 100% voltage. Okay, 100% voltage. Now this side is your KBR load on the machine. So if you increase the, as you increasing and increasing, but the voltage will not change. Voltage. This is the voltage characteristics of the machine. As you increase the row KBR, voltage will be maintained. Voltage will not change. So if this is the characteristics, we call it is a isochronous characteristics. With the KBR loading, voltage on the machine will not change. This direction is the voltage is not change. But if this voltage is not fixed with the KBR loading, if the voltage get drop in proportion, then we call it the droop characteristics. Come from the same definition, we can say the droop characteristics same. When there is no KBR on the machine, there is zero KBR drawing by the machine. Then what about the voltage? If that voltage, that is no load voltage, if we call the voltage is V zero, and when the machine is loaded. Then there will be a voltage drop that may be S, yes, B S. 
then the difference of voltage divided by the no load voltage or you can use the rated voltage that we call the voltage drop and if you multiply by this this is 100% voltage drop this 100% voltage drop we call is a droop normally the generator droop when the generator we want to run in droop voltage mode the droop setting vary between 3 to 4% that means if the 100% 100% is the rated voltage then droop you can put 103% or 104% we do not increase the same like speed as we speed we do not increase more than 104% here also generally we maintain the droop within 3 to 4% so maximum 104% so this is the figure of the droop and if the, that means the meaning of this 4% droop means when the machine is not drawing draw, is not taking any draw in the KBR in that case if the voltage is V0 that is a, this V0 will be 104% and when the machine is fully loaded with the KBR, the active power loading full, then the voltage will be 100%. This BS will be 100%, so this difference will be 4%. That is the droop. So with this droop characteristics, what is the advantage? We will load the machine based on the capability of the machine. But all the machines, one of the droop setting, it is always recommended, droop setting of the machine should be identical. Now, if you see the droop characteristics of a machine, it is same like a active power characteristics. Suppose this is your 100% voltage. And if the machine has a 4% droop, then this is a 104%, okay? And then minus, suppose 96% is a minus. So this is a 100% characteristics. Now, when the machine is not loaded with a KBR at all, then the voltage will be 104%. Now, with the loading, what will happen? This side is your KBR. When it is no KBR, this is the condition. The, as you increase the KBR, suppose this is your 100% KBR. This is your 100% KBR. So when you are loading the machine, as you increase the load, voltage will gradually drop. When the load is 100%, voltage will be rated voltage here. That means from no load condition, it will the curve will be like this. This is the droop characteristic of the generator. So as you increase about 50% load, then the voltage will be coming 102%. This is the 50 percent point and when you put 75 percent here the droop will be 101 percent the voltage is 101 percent and suppose this is a generator it is running on droop mode this is a bus and you are sensing voltage from here to the governor now when you are loading this generator suppose this is a kbr you have loaded if the kbr is 50 percent you will put 50 percent and the it is a, suppose it is a 100 volt bus so zero volt with 104 volt it was running when you load the 50 percent voltage will come 102 volt but your bus voltage is 100 volt. So if you leave the machine in that way, the voltage will be 102 volt instead of 100 volt. So if you want to bring back to the 100 volt, manually you have to intervene. With the manual arrangement, manual switch, there is a manual switch. With the manual switch, you have to reduce the excitation so that 100 from 102 volt, it will come down to 100 volt. It's same like a speed controller. So this is the group characteristics. But in this characteristics, the machine, how much load it will take, it depends on the speed. When the speed, as per the speed, it will take the load. Now, if there is a multi-machine system, then normally it is preferable to run the machine in the droop characteristics. Why? In that case, all the machine will be taking load in proportional to their droop characteristics. Suppose I am drawing, suppose there are two machines running in parallel in the droop mode. So how it will be? Suppose this is one machine and this is another machine. So these machines are running in parallel with the breaker is here. It is going to the bus bar, single line. Okay. Now here you are running with a certain load. So certain KBR is already connected. It is running with the KBR. Okay. Now some additional KBR given to the machine. Now if the suppose both the machine has the same identical droop. Suppose the droop is 104 percent. This is 104 percent droop, voltage droop. Huh? It is also 104 percent voltage droop. Now when this load come in, then immediately what will happen? How the machine will behave? Now if we draw the characteristics of these two machine. Suppose this is A machine and this is B machine. Now in the same way we can draw. So this is our droop characteristics of the machine. This side is a KBR and this side is a voltage. So suppose it is our full load voltage 100%. So if it is a 4% droop, that is a 104% voltage, right? And this is a 96% voltage. So now there are two machines. Suppose one machine, uh, both the machine is producing voltage. So this is a one machine group characteristic. This is a 100% KBR. Suppose this machine is P1 or Q1. 
Suppose this machine KBR capacity is Q1 and another machine is a bigger machine whose KBR is more. So suppose this capacity is like this. This is the second machine. This is your Q2. This is your Q2. This is a bigger machine. Now both the machine running are 104%, right? Now the moment you give the load, suppose you give a load Q. So Q equal to how much? Q1 dash plus Q2 dash. Suppose Q equal to how much? Q equal to 25% or 50%. Suppose 50%. 50% of Q1 plus Q2. That means the total power, Q1 plus Q2 reactive power, 50% of that you have loaded on the machine. That means these two machines are running over here. This is the two machine. Here you have loaded a 50% of Q1 plus Q2. You load it. Immediately what will happen? It was running with 104%. So both the machine will drop down. Key speed will drop down in proportion to the uh, speed. So from as, as the load is 50%, immediately speed will come down to 102%. It will come down over here. Right? So what will happen here? Immediately this machine it is come so if you draw the line from here it will come like this so this machine this is actually it should be 50 percent i have not drawn this this scale is not right so this actually 50 percent this will be q1 q2 dash and this will be q1 dash so this as it is 102 percent at 102 percent this q2 dash that equal how much 50 percent of q2 this will be 50 percent of q2 and q1 dash will be 50 percent of q1 so both the machine will be loaded in proportional to their capability. So in case of in that case, advantage is machine load sharing will be uniform and machine will not go to unstable. But here it will not run with a constant voltage. So when this 50% load is there, you can see if you measure the bus voltage, bus voltage will come down to suppose it is a 3.3 kV, it will come 50 2% drop will be there. So it will be running about 300 and 3.1 kV. In this voltage, it will be running. Okay. If you want to bring back the rated voltage, you have to manually, you have to control the excitation and bring to the 3.3 kV and kept for operation. So this is the called droop mode of droop voltage control mode of operation. So these are the two mode of operation. One is a isoconus voltage mode, another is a droop con voltage mode. Droop voltage mode we use when when these multiple machines are operating in parallel with the different characteristics, different uh, control device. Then we use this droop mode operation. Another way of using droop mode operation, when a particular, suppose this is a generator, it is running with a bus and that bus is connected to the grid. And when the grid is running, that means grid has a constant voltage, that means bus voltage is maintained constant. That means we can say this is as a isochronous system is running with a constant voltage. In that case, we have already said in case of isochronous operation, bus voltage you cannot change. Now this machine is a small machine in comparison to this. So this machine cannot control the bus voltage. Okay. So this machine must be working in the droop mode. So what you have to do? Suppose the, this machine has a capacity 100 kVR. It has a capacity. So you will run the start the machine. Then what you will do? And this bus voltage is already there. You parallel the machine with the it, You have to increase the voltage. Suppose this bus voltage is 3.3 kV. You have to maybe you have to increase the under no load condition without closing the breaker. Maybe it voltage will be 3.31 kV, slightly more. Then you synchronize this machine. Then you have to maintain the voltage manually, slightly higher than the bus voltage. Then automatically, whatever the load you keep over here, it will take the load. Well, suppose this load is this machine is 100 kV. Suppose you load 90 kV. The moment 90 kV is loaded, then you stop the further increasing. Then this machine will be running with the 90 kV, and whatever the further load will be coming. All the load will be taken by the grid, not by this, because this machine is running on droop mode, so it cannot you ca it cannot take any further load. And if you want to put the more load, you have to do manually. Manually, you have to increase the excitation of the machine. But otherwise, all load will be taken by the grid. Okay. So this way, we can use the droop control and for the multi-machine system. Now, from this discussion, now we can make out this device which is controlling this operation. This device we call automatic voltage regulator this automatic voltage regulator we have seen so far only the we are taking potential supply for the voltage as well as we have seen that what other thing we have seen we have seen there is a another control transformer which is taking power for the con conduction for this thyristor operation to give the dc current to give the output in addition to this 
there is another scenario, another phenomena takes place, it's called cross current, cross current scenario. What is that? Suppose there are two generators running in parallel. These are the two generators. This is a running in parallel. It is a bus, load is connected over here. Now, for any reason, if this generator voltage, or the, suppose there is a different droop setting, this, running, this machine running in droop mode. This machine has 104% droop. And this machine may be 102% droop. Then what will happen? If you see the characteristics of these two machine now, it will be different. This is 104, this is 100%. Huh? It is 104%. Suppose this machine characteristics like this. And this machine setting is 102%, right? So this machine droop is like this. This is the droop. When both the machine is running, that means this voltage is 100, suppose 104 volt and this voltage is 102 volt. Then what will happen? The, the moment load come over here, this machine will take the load, right? But this machine, what it will do? It is not giving till the load voltage is not coming over here. This machine cannot feed power because here voltage, here voltage is more, here voltage is less. So actually what will happen? It will draw the current this way. Machine will leave this machine. It will cater the power to the load at the same time. It will cater some reactive power to this other machine. Suppose this is a machine and this is a B machine. This is the A machine characteristics. This is the B machine characteristics. As the B machine has a lower voltage, so what will happen? Reactive power will flow from A machine to B machine. And you know when a generator, generator it is rotating by tur turbine. This is a it is rotating by turbine, right? This is coupled with a turbine. It is rotating with a certain speed. And at the same time, it is taking reactive power from the system. Then what will happen? This generator will not act as a synchronous generator. It will be acting as an induction generator. Because it is a, at, at the same time, maybe this machine is running with a higher speed. With the droop mode, maybe 101% droop. So it is running over the uh, synchronous speed. And at that time, the machine is taking as a reactive power from the system. So in that case, what will happen? The machine will be act as an induction generator. So that will that will that is very dangerous for us. And instead of giving the reactive power, it will draw the reactive power of the system. The system voltage also will get dropped. Same like the active power, if these two machine has a different speed, speed uh, uh, droop, then higher speed machine will take all the active power and it will flow the active power from this machine to this machine. Then this machine will be taking, absorbing active power from the system. So the machine will be acting as a motor. That's why we give the reverse, uh, reverse power flow protection. So here the reverse theory will be acting as an induction generator. That's why we have to sense whether the current is going to the machine or not. That means from the generator terminal, we have to put a CT. This CT we call a cross current compensation CT. So in the case of generator, we have already shown, we have taken the PT supply for the actual voltage. We have taken the PT supply for the thyristors. And then we have to put a CT. That CT is also another part of the input to the control device. So these are the three input is required from the generator to use the voltage control device. Okay. So this voltage control device we call is a automatic voltage regulator. So if we look into the automated voltage regulator, automatic voltage regulator has an input section where there are three input. One input is a CT input for the cross current compensation. Second input is the actual voltage of the generator. Third input is the Control voltage, supply voltage we are taking to the thyristor, to the powering the thyristor block in the power section. So, this is a three input we have to keep in mind. One input is a PT input for the actual voltage. This is as an input as a V reference voltage. It is coming automatically. And then we are giving this voltage. Then we have a CT supply. And then we have a control transformer supply. Control potential transformer or VT to give the power to the thyristor block. This is the three input. Then we have a power section. This is your input section. We have a power section and control section. Power, control and processing. Then we have a, we have already said it is output section. We have a setting section. Then we have a interface section. And finally we have the control card and control power module. Okay. This part we call is automatic voltage regulator. This automatic voltage regulator is doing this job, is controlling the generator terminal voltage. Indirectly, it is a controlling the excitation of the exciter and doing this job. Now, this AVR, we have a multiple setting in the setting section. So that we'll discuss in a brief. What are the various settings available? In this AVR, the various settings which are available, it is obviously the first setting we need. What is that? That is a group 
and isochronous mode selection. So there will be one setting will be there automatically. One is isochronous or group. That mode selection will be there one switch. That is the first switch. Second switch, if you go for the group, then we have said group has a normally the range, group setting range available from 101% to 110%. Normally available. Speed group and voltage group, normally this is available. But how we will change the setting? So there will be another switch by rotating by the switch, we can change this group. So there will be a group change setting or group setting, group setting switch. This is a mode selector switch. Huh? This is a mode selector switch, two position, either isochronous group, that is the selection. But here, now the value of the group to be setting by this switch, this is called group setting switch. That is another switch. Third switch is your, you know, this ABR like speed controller, it can go unstable due to various reasons. So to reduce the gain or increase the stability, there is a gain or stability selector switch that is also available over here. Gain or stability switch. That is also another switch available. Number four, we have said in the case of uh, governor or speed control with over speed, under speed switch is there. In the case of ABR also, there is a under voltage switch is there. Why it is important, you know, under voltage condition, which is deduced because there are two different aspects here. One device is producing voltage, another device is producing frequency. So these are not related to each other, they are independent. So how they are controlled, we don't know. That's why this generator always control B by F, it maintained B by F. This is to be maintained to avoid the core saturation. B by F ratio to be maintained. So as the voltage is producing by, controlled by ABR, and F is controlled by governor, so this to be correlated. So this reference frequency is always coming to the ABR and ABR is monitoring the voltage. When the voltage is coming below its setting point, then V by F ratio will be very less. Immediately it will be dangerous for the machine. That's why it gives immediately alarm. So this V by F ratio setting is there. That setting and along with this, if the V by F ratio is come below the setting point, then it give a alarm or it can give a indication. The machine is running on low V by F ratio. So this is called under voltage, under VF, V by F ratio setting that is also available in the machine. In addition to this, this voltage setting which we are giving, that is a, and fifth switch is the reference voltage setting. We are giving the reference voltage. Now reference voltage setting, normally suppose it is a, if it is a 3.3 kb machine, reference voltage setting is available from 2.5 kb to 4 kb, like this. In terms of secondary, it will be maybe 300 volt, to 500 volt in the, the terms of secondary voltage, speed is secondary. So this voltage, at what voltage you have to set, that's one switch is required. That is called reference voltage setting or volt setting. We call it volt setting switch. Reference voltage setting. Now once we put the voltage, suppose you put the voltage is a 410 volt, which is equivalent to 3.3 kV. Suppose you put it like that. Then this voltage again, it can be changed with plasma because there, there is a variation. So that variation we do by potentiometer. There are two potentiometers is available. One is called 500 K potentiometer, 500 ohm potentiometer. Another is the one K potentiometer. With the 500 K potentiometer, 500 ohm potentiometer, one half K potentiometer, we can change the voltage plus minus 5% from the setting value. Suppose the setting value is a 400 volt, which is equivalent to suppose 3.3 kV. So we can change 5% of this means it is a in if you put a 500 ohm resistance with this with this uh, circuit then it will be what will it will happen it will change five percent of this voltage means 20 volt plus or it go 420 to 380 but if you put one k it will go 10 percent that means it can go 440 it can come 360 volt that also variation is there this is another switch these are the rotating switch which you can adjust during commissioning time and you can change the setting accordingly. In addition to this, there is a, another lot of DIP switch. You know DIP, we know that dual in package, dual, uh, dual in package. That is called DIP, dual in package switch. That is a generally we do all PCBs. This dual in package switch is coming, DIP switch. There is a multiple DIP switch available in various uh, areas or the different make. So mainly what are the switch available? One of the switches is, you know, this ABR, it can be used for the 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So there is a frequency setting. At what frequency you want to use this ABR? It is a 50 hertz 
or six so to dip switch has a two position one position or off position so suppose if you put one position it may be 60 hours if you put off position it will working as 50 hours so this way there is a dip one dip switch for the frequency selection then the second dip switch we have already said there's a cross current ct is there the c2 could be one ampere it could be five ampere so there are two value possible so there is another dip switch for the ct selection ct selection one dip switch then third dip switch you know this PT supply which you are taking, it can be different value, it could be 400 volt, it could be 120, it could be 3 phase, it could be single phase, so that selection also there is another DIB switch, okay, then there are a multiple DIB switch for the machine rating, what is that, a same AVR, it can be used for the different size of machine, suppose you can use a 1 megawatt machine, then maybe 5 megawatt machine, then maybe more than 10 megawatt machine, it is maybe 5 to 10 megawatt, it is 1 to 5 megawatt, so these are the range. Now, if you want to use AVR for this range, then AVR rule will be, operation will be different. So there will be one switch for this purpose. If you want to put the, suppose machine range is 7 megawatt, maybe there is another DIP switch to select this range. To select this range, there may be another DIP switch. So this type of multiple DIP switch may be available to select the machine rating. So that is also available. So all these DIP switch you can see in one place, all the switch are available, maybe 6, 7, 8, with the different for the selection of the difference this these are also available so these are the various switch and this switch to be selected as per your requirement during site commissioning these are the various settings available on the dip switch on the avr and this is all about the automatic voltage regulator and uh, it will control the voltage so that means that if you want to generator control then there are two operation one is a avr another is a governor governor is controlling speed and frequency and corresponding active power and AVR is controlling voltage and corresponding reactive power. Okay, this is all about when you use a single machine, it is always preferable to use in either isochronous speed mode and isochronous voltage mode. But if you want a multi machine system, it is preferable to use either uh, by droop speed mode and droop voltage mode. Okay, this is all about the AVR control setting we have discussed. With this, we are closing the automatic voltage regulator and voltage control or KVR control and with this we are closing this generator control system. If anybody has any question, please uh, let me know to my email, I will try to answer. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.